Hello out there in the cloud. My name's Kathy, if we haven't met before at the club. Oh, seems like a long time ago. And that's, uh, that goes without saying. So if you're tuning into this class, um, you'll be tuning into the not quite live version, but uh, I'm glad that you've chosen to just take a break for yourself from all of the activity of the mind. Um, there's nobody coming to the, the class sort of live this morning as we're heading into this long weekend. Uh, lots of things to get organized <laughs> for whatever, uh, whatever celebrations or virtual get togethers that people are having doesn't matter. We've all got uh, got lots uh, lots on the mind, so a chance to give it a break. And this is a restorative class, uh, which means that it's it's not intended to involve uh, a lot of effort. Uh, it's a meditative style class, and the nervous system gets to switch gears from the always scanning for threat and helpful side of being ready to act, to run and hide or attack. Um, those, those types of signals, our brain is getting plenty of those. So we um, can, can really help to ease some of the, the suffering and the overfiring of, of that side of the brain. If we can switch gears for a little bit and tap into the parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system. So I'll, I'll lead a, a little bit of a shorter session and enjoy your practice. It's a good class to have some props. I've got a, a few pillows, different sizes. It doesn't really matter, just off my couch couple of smaller ones to uh, the, the poses in this class are often supported and there'll be some stretching as well. Um, I have a blanket down on my mat and I always have that there for knees. We're going to do um, some more yin poses to open up in this area. The hip flexor psoas from lots of sitting can be tight or maybe you've been hiking. And so that's, uh, that's about it for what you need. We are going to start standing up, which is rare in a class like this. It'll be the only bit of standing that we do. And uh, just so that we can feel the ground in an upright position before we come down and do a, a little bit of, of warming up just to get some collagen and fluids moving through the body and um, as you'll see, perhaps if you have uh, a pet or just in nature, that uh, animals will often um, have some kind of involuntary movements and lots of shaking as a way of um, easing their stress. And so we might as well do that too. But let's start just coming to stillness first standing. And I'm going to ring a bell so that we signal our our body minds that we are uh, here for a while with nothing else to do and nowhere to go. Good, so the eyes can be open if you feel a little wobbly or you can let them close and you can let things be wobbly. Don't go ahead and try to have any sort of posture. Just let yourself be kind of heavy in whatever shape that you're in. You can take it in physically just by feeling the feet planted in the earth here, welcoming the support that the soil and the nutrients that are there that are coming to enter the soles of the feet and 
give this part of your body a hug or a massage just through the weight of your heels and the balls of your feet. Just let the knees be nice and soft and allow the awareness to come into the entirety of the body standing in this shape. The weight of the pelvis and where the head is resting above the shoulders. Allowing a few moments just to settle into gravity here. And notice what you notice in terms of any physical sensations that are happening right now. Could be some tension in a particular area, some gripping in the toes or the jaw. You might notice that breath is here and there's sensations of some expansion and some softening. And that might be in one particular area of the body. You might feel the, the oxygen coming in, it might be the belly or the chest. Or the tip of the nose. Might notice a little bit of vibration, even though we're, we're intentioning to be still, the breath is always moving and there's some resonating along the spine. And then just notice the field of hearing that is present, any sounds that are coming to your ears that are inside your space. And that space could be within the body. You might be aware of sound of breath or other beings in your household. Noises of nature or vehicles from outside the window. All events crossing the landscape of the mind right now, including the thoughts of things that have been before us this morning or whenever it is that you're tuning in and some agendas or worrying, looking ahead, inviting some friendliness for it all to be okay to be here, because it is anyway. So the allowing without pushing away over time, that's the practice just to have some compassion and let it be good. So if your eyes are closed, let them blink open, take in your surroundings and start to bounce just on the heels. So just really light and loose. Let your heels lift off the floor just a little bit so that you feel a chain reaction moving through the entire body. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Resetting all of the, the bones, the shins around the knees. The large femur bones might feel like a bit of effort there. Just keep it on the low down. The bones of the pelvis. And the spinal cord rising up as the shoulders. Add a little more to this so the arms can go and a few shoulder shrugs, loosening up however you like. 
And there's no right or wrong here. Just notice maybe the heart rate is increasing or a sensation of temperature rising or whatever you feel, just taking it in. Let's take a few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Ah, and let something go, breathing in and breathing out. And one more, inhale. Ah, and slow that down. Just bring it to uh, settling in. Breathing in and out through the nose if that's comfortable. And if for some of us the breath is causes agitation, then don't even bother. Just let it happen. Let's take a few throws, bending the knees and reaching the arms up. And then exhale, bend the knees again and just fold it. Empty the breath. Come up again on the inhale. Stretch out a little and then bend the knees and exhale. Inhale. <sighs> exhale. Three more in. Let something go. Inhale. <sighs> Once more in. <sighs> and if it's comfortable for you, let the feet move a little wider apart and let your chin tuck in towards the chest for a forward fold catching opposite elbows and just dangling there. Have a bend at the knees so it's not a, an overstretch of the hamstrings, allowing the spine to cascade here and any attachment to outcome or a particular thought train that's going by, just reining up the top of the head. Let's take three breaths here, pausing at the top of each inhale. And then exhale all the way to empty. Inhale. And exhale. Once more, breathing in. And then exhale, bend the knees and we'll slowly roll up. Take lots of breaths on the way up. Chin to chest, you can move your hands along your legs, your thighs to have some support for that. Just tucking the tailbone under as the spine starts to lengthen out and we'll loop the shoulders out a few times, up to the ears, breathing in and exhale, bring them down the back. Inhale, just exaggerating that and exhale. Couple more. A little bend at the knees maybe as you come up and around. Good, take the feet a little wider apart, make gentle fists with the hands and we'll start to do some twists. Coming off of the heel of one foot and then the other. As you check in with your spine, revolving. And just glancing to the side or over the shoulder and allowing your arms to connect long sides of the body like a, a squeeze hug and massage or stimulate the kidneys and the adrenals, those flushing out organs in the back body. So continuing to send through these physical movements messages to the brain that it's okay. To slow down. And let's do that winding down a little slower. Coming to stand again. And we'll do a bit of a massage for the um, digestive organs and the process of coming up. So a circle coming up on the right side, the ascending colon and down on the left side. So it's, it's really light and following the process through which these organs eliminate or help us digest what we've taken in in our diet, food and drink, as well as in our 
emotions. It's all part of the same being, the structure, energy moving and just helping things along here. Coming up on the right and down on the left. Ascending colon and then descending colon on the left. Let's do about five more circuits around there. This is a nice thing to do before a meal. Good. Little fist to wrap into the chest. Just going around uh, the upper lungs and giving some stimulation and massage there, making some, some space, clearing out anything stuck. And wherever your, your knuckles or fingers, it can be just finger taps, can reach in this area, could be in the upper back as well or depending on how tight your shoulders are, you can get in underneath the shoulder blades. The lungs are back there as well. You can even give your kidneys a wrap in that way if that feels good. And in the front as well. Just a little bit of love tapping. And then shake it off. Shake it off. Let's do some shoulder shrugs, breathe in. Slow exhale. Let's feel the difference as you breathe in and hold even in your emotional body what it's like to be here. And slowly exhale. Inhale, we might not be aware that we're in this pose involuntarily a lot. And exhale, release it down one more time, breathe in and breathe out. So let's take a seat now. You can sit in a chair on your couch, edge of your bed, just so that you feel like you have some length in your spine and I'm gonna uh, perch myself up on a pillow. So that there doesn't feel like there's any compression in the, the low back so we can do a little bit more for the shoulders and neck. Let's rub the palms together. It's a little bit cold in, in my space. And create some friction and some warmth. Spend a little extra time doing that. So you can take your right hand now and just place it behind the left side of the neck. Just reach it around to where you can and give it a little bit of a pull forward. So I'm tipping my head to the right as I do that and then bringing the hand all the way down to the center of the chest and looking over to the left. We'll do that a couple of times, reaching with your right hand around the left side of the neck and then starting to draw that arm, ac palm across the chest to the right as your gaze goes to the left. And do a couple of those, as much pressure as you like with your fingers, with your palm, and just see if that works, if that makes sense with your neck to start to look to the left as you draw the palm towards the right. Two more. Good, come back to center, let's rub it again. Just so we get the left hand warmed up a bit. We don't get to uh, touch too many people these days or get a, uh, a hug or a massage. So we do it for ourselves. So we take your left hand to the back of the neck, down and across, and then looking over to the right. Reach to where you can, might not be so far, and then palm sweeps down, just a press at the heart. And do that a couple more times. The neck massage and just an affirmation to the heart that 
I am here. Let that go and bring the right ear over towards the right shoulder. Stretch the left palm away and press out through the base of the palm. Start to take a look over towards the right. Let's bring the left hand to rest. Either fingers on the floor or the hip or bring it around to the low back with the palm facing away. So a little more in the left shoulder, internally rotating there. Continuing to look over towards the right and then just look down a little bit on the right. Move the chin up and down or you can open and close the mouth on this side, little circles with the tip of the nose, exploring into the left side of the neck. Just keeping a little bit of awareness that the spine stays free and long. Let's release the um, chin now towards looking down and then back to center and then drop the right ear just straight to the right shoulder again. Bring the right fingertips to the side and reach the left arm up and take a side stretch. Come up a little bit on the inhale and then exhaling for the side stretch. Lift up, inhale. Exhaling, side stretch. And then come up this time, reaching up through the left fingertips and spinning the palm to face towards the back a little bit, where the upper arm bone is wrapping. Inward slightly, bring the left hand down now behind the skull, chin to chest, and then go ahead and look forward. Just use the head to move the elbow back a little in space or take the right arm and just give an assist there like you're framing your face and breathe into the gills or just be aware of how the breath is moving through the sides of the body for three more. Some emphasis on the exhale is optional. Helps to <coughs> send that message to the nervous system that there is no threat right now. Here, breathing, measured breathing. Let's reach the arms up and bring the hands around behind the back. Clasp the hands there if you can. You can keep the elbows bent, squeezing together or straighten the arms out any amount and send the sternum towards the ceiling. Taking three more of those long exhales there. This one, two, three. Release the hands, pause for a breath in. And let it go. Left ear to left shoulder now. Press the right palm away. Just feeling that right side of the neck, anywhere along the right arm, right wrist maybe, that press away through the palm. Start to look out over the left shoulder and either bring the right fingertips to land somewhere or bend the right elbow and slide it, slide the right palm to face behind. So the back of the right hand is at your Lower back. Nod the chin just slightly down into the left. And then tip of the nose, making some small movements on this side. See what it feels like to really give a big stretch to your jaw when you're over on this side. Just make any kind of faces there. Don't even think about those muscles in the face getting super tight and all of the expressions. Chin down towards the chest, slowly bring the head back to center. Left fingertips to the side. Now left ear to left shoulder again, reach the right arm up. 
and exhale, length through both sides of the body. So you don't have to fold in half here, just a bit of length on the inhale and some contraction on the exhale. Waving with the breath, inhale and exhale. And then lifting up, spinning the right palm, the right upper arm bone towards the back. So the hand can come down and hold the back of the neck or the back of the skull to lift it up. Just press the head back a little bit. You might take a hold of the elbow with your left hand and move that back as well. And we'll take those three full breath cycles. Three dimensional breath. So good. To stretch the lungs. Reach both arms up on the inhale and swim around to take a hold of fists or thumbs. Maybe just squeeze the elbows together with the arms staying bent or straighten the arms. Stretch the eyes towards the ceiling as well. They can be open or closed. And then stretch the eyes, just the eyes over towards the right. And then over towards the left and then down to the ground and up to the ceiling again and over to the left and then over to the right. Working those eye muscles and down to the ground and then back to center. Release the arms, let the hands come to the back of the skull. Now draw the elbows wide and then hug the elbows towards each other, chin to chest. Just keep the height of your spine, so not coming into a lot of flexion. Just dropping into that back of the neck. You could press in with thumbs or fingers into the base of the skull, behind the ears to get a little massage, little circles with your fingers in there. You can do that with your head back to level as well. And then bring it around to the jaw. Pointer and index finger massaging into the top and bottom jaw, those bones. You wear those mouth guards, <laughs> the grinding. And temples. Seeing what's here between the eyebrows with the thumbs pressing in and lifting up and then big thumbprints moving away from each other, clearing out, ironing out the forehead and any lines of concentration or frustration, clearing this windshield of of the mind or the front of the brain. So when we need it, we can tap into uh, this more skillful thinking coming out of the amygdala, which gets triggered when we are operating in that scanning for threat. And shake it again, a little bit with the hands, circle out the wrists. You can lean back and give the legs a shake, come off of any support that is there. And just shake that out. Let's take the feet wide and drop the knees over towards the left and press into the right shin. Just leaning back into your, your palms or fists back there and take a few breaths into that area down the front of the right hip. So your right hip will feel lifted. Let's just have some weight in the left hand and come up a little bit, stretch the right arm across and wave towards the back of the space. And then open up again through the front of the chest and then wave and reach for something towards the back of the space. So all the weight is on your left hip. One more time, open it up. Keep pressing the right shin as you roll the ball of the right hip and reach to the left. 
Back to center on an inhale and we'll switch sides. So we'll bring the knees towards the right and press into the left shin. So your left hip will be lifted, the ball of the left hip, left side of the pelvis, pressing forward a little bit as you lift out of the waist. So we'll keep some weight in the right hand or fist and then sweep around with your left arm towards the back of your space. Just wringing out the cloth around the spine, inhale, open, and then exhale to sweep around. You can follow your left fingertips with your gaze on the open. And then exhale. Back to center on the inhale. And bring the soles of the feet together. Have a long diamond shape. So some might want to be up on a pillow so that the sits bones can roll a little bit forward. You can also place Supports underneath your upper thighs, one on each side. And you, if you don't have the props or you don't need them, that's fine too. It's a long diamond shape here. Press into the fingertips to start so you get a little bit of length in the low back. And then just extending the chest upwards or maybe a little on a forwards trajectory. And if you're comfortable, you can take your hands forward and let the spine now come into flexion. You can hold on to your shins or your feet. Some space for the belly to receive the oxygen here. And you might feel that in the lower back as well. This is a nice uh, alternative to a child's pose, just in this Extended diamond pose. See what you're feeling in the physical realm. Maybe something in the hips. Let's take five breaths here. It's one. Two, three, four, five. Belly draws in to lift up. And use the hands to bring the legs back together. Letting the legs stretch out now. Leaning back and just flipping the feet. Just little, little wiggles. Massaging across the backs of the heels. Windshield wiper the feet and just let, just let the flesh of the thighs be really jiggly and loose here. More of those, more of the collagen moving through the fascial network. Okay, so let's come to the hands and knees. If you use blocks um, or like to have something higher for your hands, um, they might be, it might be good to use them here. Um, and you can also come to fists instead of fingertips. I'm going to use um, one of my pillows. You could also use just a, a rolled up blanket. We'll do, this is where we'll do the uh, Yin pose, a, a lizard. And so it's a little bit intense. Gonna climb onto the bolster, uh, bolster or towel pillow with the left knee and bring the right foot forward. Curl the left toes under. And knee, upper thigh, onto this pillow or bolster. It's gonna have a deeper stretch in that front hip flexor psoas. And we're gonna stay here for about a minute. Don't worry too much about, there'll be work in the right hip, I know. 
See if you can stay with breathing or even just sound, something that's an anchor. Allowing the sensations in that left front hip to rise and fall and move on through. Sometimes with some time, those sensations are increasing in intensity. And at other times, maybe dissolving. Just trying to stay where you can breathe and feel that this is therapeutic for your body this time. Let's take five more exhales. It's one. And heavy the weight of the pelvis for two. You don't have to be trying to keep up with my counting or anything. It's just for a frame window. One more breath. And exhale. Let's press back from that. Straighten out the front leg now. Draw the toes towards the face. Wrap the outer right hip down a bit. Draw back if you can through the right heel as the chest lifts. And then let the head, neck, and shoulders go. Folding over this extended leg that could also have quite a bend at the knee. Taking five breaths there into the right hamstring, behind the knee, calf, or four, three, two, and one. Shift forward again. Pick up the back knee. However you'd like to exit from this pose, you might just uh, stay down on the knee and wiggle to one side, or if you feel like taking a downward dog, just to shake it out, or come to the hands and knees, a child's pose. Whatever you need to do without thinking too much about it. Transitions equally important to the poses themselves. Just to refresh and start. Let's meet in the tabletop shape and bring in some support underneath the right knee. Could be a flat blanket, could be a pillow, something to climb up on. And however it is that you get up there with the left foot, so the knee is not too far in front of the ankle. You can have your hands on either side of the front foot or they can be on the inside, on fists or blocks or books. Stretching out the back knee. So you get that length and then resting that leg. If your foot doesn't get a cramp, then coming to the top of the right foot. And then we'll stay here for a minute on this side. And return to one of those anchors. Breath, sound, or just the body. Good. Let's take five more breaths on this side. It's one, 
two, three, four, and five. Sending the hips back now. Walking the hands back. If you've got something under the hands, that can come back as well. I'd be using blocks, but I don't have them in my space here. So draw the left outer hip back and down a little bit, lengthen through the spine, and then let the head, neck, and shoulders go. Exhaling here, those long exhales. And starting over as many times as you like. Four, three, mind wanders, just bringing it back. Two, one, again, shift out of your pose, pressing into the palms, maybe stepping through a lunge to downward dog or just wiggle to one side. Some cat and cow or hands and knees, child's pose. Checking in right and left side now. A little more balance. Let's do that. Let's come to the hands and knees and do a couple on the inhale to open the chest. And then on the exhale to draw the belly in. Breath in. And breath out. Inhale once more. And exhale. Keep the hips above the knees. You might have something underneath the knees and walk the hands forward. So we take a, a puppy pose or an extended child's pose. Sending the breastbone towards the floor. And when the shoulder blades start to move in towards each other and down the back, if your forehead comes to the floor, that's fine. You can rest it there. The forearms might also land. And just relax there, or if the forearms and elbows can hug close to the ears, then bring the palms behind the back of the head and walk the elbows a little forward. And just lean, or just allow the weight of the body to be moving towards the heels. A little bit of core in the low belly to keep the Face and the low back nice and broad. Three, two, moving some breath even between the shoulder blades for one. And releasing there, bringing the hands underneath the shoulders now to come up through table and back and towards a child's pose. So let your spine round. You try bringing the knees right together. Lots of options. You can have a pillow or blanket underneath your, your seat. Forehead resting palm on palm or fist on fist, curled up in a little bit of a, a ball, putting your head down. Support for the weight of the head. If you prefer not to be on the knees, then you can be on the back with the knees just hugging in there. Challenging for the mind to be in poses for some time. So worthwhile, just like we Train our muscles at the gym. Bicep curls for the brain here. Increasing focus, resilience, trusting in the benefits to the body. Of taking the foot off the gas. And three more breaths.
So slowly, if you're on your back, you can stay there. Otherwise, just sitting up to bring the legs over to one side. Have your props um, around you where you can grab. You can have that blanket underneath your, your back body if, you're, if the ground feels hard. Let's do a little more for the hips here. You can just have the pillows nearby. You can do that, some support for twists. And we'll just do a couple more things before closing. So let's take the right ankle above the left knee and press the right thigh away, inner thigh away. And then stay with that or bring the left knee in towards the chest and use your right hand or elbow to keep working the right knee away from the chest. Rock it over towards the left a little bit. We'll take three breaths on this side. This one, if it's too intense, then just come back to center or bring the left foot to the floor for two. And three. Move back to center. Stretch the right heel to the ceiling. And do a few circles through that ankle. Could stretch the left leg out as well if you feel okay there. Keeping the hips level and take one more breath, pressing up through the heel. Hug the right knee in towards the chest and give it a couple swipes side to side. Open the arms up and circle that leg around a few times, Just some big circles out to the side and over to the left. You can take a pillow and have it on your left side and then bring the right shin, knee, anything that can land on that pillow. So your right hip will be lifted, but your left shoulder or your right shoulder stays down. Just resting here for a little while, 30 seconds. Often we feel we're somehow not getting it or not doing it right in our practice when we notice that the mind is traveling somewhere else, caught up in a story. But in fact, that's actually, that's the success is noticing the, what the mind is, where it is, whether it's not here, that's it. All of a sudden it is here. One more inhale. And exhale, releasing to center. You can just pause there for a moment and notice if one side feels longer or lighter. And if you have that pillow over on the left, take it to the right, bend both knees and cross the left ankle above the right knee. And we'll take the hip stretch, figure four, resting pigeon on this side long through the tailbone and opening up the left inner thigh with a bit of assist from your left hand, rolling outwards those muscles, press the right foot or bring the right knee towards the chest. And for some reason, this side often is a lot tighter for me. So if you need a little more, you can rock it over towards the right and pause there, continuing to extend long through the left sits bone. Back to center and lower the right foot. We'll take the left heel to the ceiling now. You can hold the thigh if you can reach for it and do a few circles out through that ankle. Circles and pointing and flexing some space there. And bring the left knee in towards the chest. Right leg can straighten out a little bit. Start to loop, you can support with your left hand, your left knee going in circles or just 
open up the arms and go freestyle around to the left and then the right. Massaging in the back hips and just oiling up that joint in both directions. I'm going to take the left shin over towards the bolster now that's on the right or some support there. And if it's too much, you can bend both knees and stick the pillow in between your thighs or underneath your shin. See if you can keep the left shoulder heavy on the ground for about five. Maybe looking over the left shoulder for three, two, one, and back. Hugging that knee in one more time, exhale, and then extending out just to take in again the shape and the difference right and left if there's anything noticeable. Let's have both knees come in now and rock side to side. A few circles with the hands on tops of the knees. We'll move into a final rest period for a couple of minutes. You can be just as you are lying on the back. And you can take as long as you'd like as well. Or if you'd like to take the pillows that you have and have a supported heart opening pose. Then you can have a pillow, depending on the size of it, um, for the upper back and something that's a little higher for the head. So I've got these two pillows, just happens to work out for me. And then laying down the back so that the head is a little higher than the heart. Arms wide or maybe the hands want to Connect with the body, the chest, or the, the belly. Legs can be long, or knees can be touching with the feet wide. I'll ring the bell for a couple of minutes of rest and digest here. Or we close. Scanning the body posture, feeling the settling of the bones. And whatever is here is just fine. Fatigue or agitation. Thinking, planning for what's happening next. Some reluctance to being still, it's all fine. You can have open awareness to all of the body senses. Hearing, vision, touch, contact, a feeling of pressure or weight. Aware of the mental landscape, the emotional tone that's present right now. In a moment, you'll hear the sound of the bell. But you can continue on to rest if that feels best. At home, in your studio there. And if you're wishing to close the practice, 
bringing some movements back to the fingers and toes, opening and closing the jaw. Aware of the props if you're using them and rolling over to one side. You're just resting there with the knees bent for a moment in the rescue pose. Extending some gratitude and appreciation to this body for showing up to whatever it had to say. Allowing that to be. And then meeting in an upright seat, taking a moment to reorient the spine and to also take in the and offer some gratitude towards others who may be here practicing together, each from their own space, each simply wanting to be at ease happy, free from suffering, well in mind and body, and may the merits of our practice, whenever we're practicing, carry on and continue and move out into our thoughts, speech and actions. May all beings be safe. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. Happy Easter. Namaste.